all day long at work, we love to play music, as I'm sure most of you do. And uh, unfortunately, we have a lot of really bad DJs. And nothing is worse than a really bad DJ. Nothing can ruin productivity faster on a Monday morning than having someone coming off an emotional weekend playing Nothing Compares to You by Sinead O'Connor, <laughs> or even worse, Wind Beneath My Wings by Bette Midler. But being the solutions-oriented people that we are, we quickly hacked together some makey-makey boards, a Mac Mini, a Sonos, and one of those inflatable Punch Libre dudes, and created this. So now, when the music sucks, all you had to do was walk up and punch it, and the song would change. <laughs> Instant gratification for the win. So why is this a functional example? Why is this a successful example of user experience? Uh, I think that's a fair question because there's a lot of ways that we could have gone about solving this. We could have made a Chrome extension, we could have made an app, or actually I'm pretty sure that the Sonos controller as it exists has a button that you can push that goes to the next song. But I think there was something we were craving that a satisfaction that the screen, a touching a screen could not give us. We needed a much more primal feeling. The frustration of bad music needed a cathartic release that only a bop of a hand could deliver. So. Punch a Libre. The next thing I want to talk about is some work we've been doing with Google. And this was a really special project called Made with Code. Uh, Made with Code, if you're not familiar with it, is all about getting teenage girls involved with coding. Because the fact is that less than 1% of teenage girls are actively involved in coding in America, which, is, which needs to change given the nature of technology permeating everything we do. So we need to open their eyes to the potential of how code could influence the things they love in their life. But you know, rather than making code seem like a chore, being like, come on, Sally, read this book about code. It's going to be fun. Like, we needed to create projects that really spoke to them with the things that they already cared about. Uh, music, culture, fashion, art. These projects were meant to be an eye-opener into the simplicity of code and just begin the conversation. So towards the end of last year, we were in talks with the White House. And it led us to this thought. What if we let teenage girls code the National Tree Lighting Ceremony? Holy shit. That was just like, for me, this, I wait for those moments when I'm like, this could be epic. I love the thought of simple digital input creating physical output on such a massive cultural scale. So let me explain to you how the tree lighting ceremony works. You have one giant tree surrounded by 56 smaller trees. The 56 trees represent the 50 states plus six other territories that I'm, I'm still waiting to figure those out. Um, so our experience was not only letting each girl design and make a tree, bring it to life in their own bespoke way, and there was millions of possibilities, but they then would designate, based on where they live, where, her, where their design would go. So it definitely had a sense of pride and localization to it. This is truly one of these projects that comes along every decade or so. And seeing firsthand being in DC and seeing firsthand girls coding these projects was just such a rewarding fulfillment uh, for them to just be playing with Blockly, doing their, doing their designs. But really, the user experience went so far beyond just what was happening with Blockly and dragging and dropping. It was creating this emotional connection with a sense of patriotism and inclusion in a, in, a, in a national moment that you could tell they felt it, and it gave them their 15 minutes or 15 seconds of digital fame. <laughs>